of the show or four battlefield squads of course guys just an fyi we have a lot of cool stuff coming up after this as well uh we have a uh, post post show coverage so we're gonna you know talk to the titanfall crew we're gonna talk to the fifa and madden crews as well uh we have a lot of fun surprises there so make sure you guys tune in for that that's going to be taking place after battlefield squads but in the meantime though our final game here wesley can the united kingdom squad come out on top and I, I think it might be a clean sweep for the Germans. Uh, and, you know, it's just because they've got the advantage. In their heads, they're thinking, yeah, we're already 2-0 up. I think we can win this one. But, you know, you know, the plucky Brit may come around and they might win around. You never know. Keep in mind, Team Stone Mountain versus Team Neebs. Yeah. Team Stone Mountain looking fantastic. Neebs just needs to, you know, they need to pull it out of the bag. They yeah. need to get that win on the scoreboard. Dare I say, he's got to pull a Stone Mountain, get the troops in line. Yep. Get everyone ready. You know, believe in, you know, advance to the objective. PTO, push the objective. Get the points on the board. Now it's time. I just heard someone just yell. I thought, was that in the game or was that here? No, I'm almost certain that was someone in the crowd. I think it was AC Bongos actually yelled out loud. He has a very bellowing yell, you know. Just sound like a real very Spartan, commanding like, voice. Yeah, real 300-ish. Uh, here we go, folks. Into the gameplay. We're going to see some rifle gameplay now. So just look at the scope. Look how beautiful the weapon looks. It's one of those things I like to play with a sniper rifle quite a lot. It's a real, like, it's a, it's a role where, like, if you get the kill, you feel like you really deserve it. And now when you look at those weapons, you think, wow, that's absolutely beautiful. Oh, the detail. <laughs> Talking about detail. Look at that explosion. And you see right there the, yep. the ground deformation that happened when that tank blew up. It, it sent, you know... Obviously, just shaped the ground underneath. Oh, oh no! Bayonet no, charge! Oh no! Got him! Got him! <laughs> oh, Jesse Wellens, you poor thing! I'm so sorry. That was really cool to see, though. But that was so entertaining. But you, what we were talking about is that the bayonet charge is like more than a sprint. You're like you're going into a mad rage. Like you, you're going to take this player down. And uh, right there, I think that's the first. Oh, oh, are we going for another one? No, oh, never mind. Oh, I didn't quite get there. Nah. Oh. Jump. Well, then you can see, you can see, right, it's a trade-off, isn't it? If you're yeah. going to push yourself, if you're going to go for that bayonet charge, you can't do anything else once you've committed. So there's yeah. a chance you could get taken out. I mean, he, ran, he runs up to the window, he tries to kill the guy, the guy gets away, and, uh, well, then, obviously, you need to uh, pay the price. Yeah, no matter, like, what terrain, you know, like, if you hit a wall, right, essentially, is what I'm trying to get. If you hit a wall, you're, you're stopped. Right, mm -hmm. your tracks. There's nothing you can do. Um, you slow down. You can't sprint again. You can't do anything. Um, I, I believe you could still uh, shoot your gun, though. I, I, I think, think you can still do that. You can still uh, make sure that happens to defend yourself. But any kind of mobility, though, becomes you know severely limited, which, yep. of course, is an issue if you're in the thick of things. If you're right in the yep. heart of the battlefield you and you go in for the charge, you, you can pay the price if you don't get that one. And obviously, if you're going for the bayonet charge, you're focusing on that player. So you might forget that you can still fire. You might maybe get yourself out of the situation, but you're going for that player. So you're intent on getting them. And sometimes you just forget those things. Yeah, very true. Uh, you know, we, we covered a lot of uh, elements in the game here, um, and, and I know that, you know, the community, I'm sure, has a lot of questions about what you can and cannot do. Uh, I believe some uh, weapons also have uh, different firing options as well. I, I believe so. I think yeah, there's well, like well, a couple that I played. It was one that could do single shot, one that could do um, automatic fire. So yep. uh, there, some of the weapons, you know, mechanics that you guys are familiar with in, in, in other Battlefield games, you know, are certainly there for you to be able to switch out the weaponry and uh, or switch out the style of play, right? Whether you yep. want to go for a more steady shot or uh, you know, maybe you want a little bit more ammunition, things like that. So again, the fray. Yep, get in there. These are some great Ooh. cinematic shots. They are really good. They show off the environment really well. And obviously, you can see this bit here looking like pristine countryside. I mean, yeah, we've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, destruction down here at the bottom. A little bottom. bit. That's quite a bit of destruction there. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, like, it was pristine when we started. And I, you can bet your life that it's been completely leveled by the end of the round. So, Oh, boy. Well, here's Stone Mountain trying his best here. We're in the, this is one of the actual ruined villages. This is part of the map already ruined as it goes along. And as you go to the other side, you've got the pristine countryside. So there's a nice variation on the same map. 
you can always make the pristine countryside completely flat if you want to. Yeah, it's just good visual, visualization, right? You know, you know that I'm in this particular portion of the map because it, it looks, you know, untouched by, by you know, the, the unfortunate... Here's the, uh, the destruction we talked about, people using this uh, crater here as a little bit of cover. You see they drop right down and you can uh, you can take cover here behind the wall and then pop up if you want to. But those those explosions allow you to change the environment a little bit more. And right from above here. Also, a couple of things too. Um, there are certain structures that you can actually level completely, yeah. and uh, it, it will create a crater underneath as well. So for people who may be concerned about like you know the. the Maybe a building completely flatlined and there's no cover. There's opportunity for that because of the ground deformation. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like, if you think about it this way, the floorboards sort of crumble in on themselves and there's a bit of space underneath them. So if you crouch down, then there's that still that tiny bit of wall that's been left behind and you're still able to take a bit of cover there. So you might be out in the middle of nowhere with the people firing down on you, but you've got the opportunity to take some cover and maybe give yourself a little bit more of a fighting chance. Oh, he just jumped out of that airplane he bailed, so he fast. He was not having any of that. But here we go. Now there's uh, Team Stone Mountain trying to push forward. But here comes a, a tank here. Ooh. And they're going to get a huge hit on that tank. And the tank goes down. Big plays there for Stone Mountain and his crew. Completely decimating that war machine. Good work there from them. Well, I mean, like you saw the power of the anti-tank grenade there. I mean, it looks like a small object in your hand, but it, it sure got a big explosion uh, when it goes off. And multiple ones of those are easily going to be able to take down one of those land ships. Oh, yeah, they're, they're just they're just deadly. But, you know, I think a, a lot of people always ask the questions, well, you know, how do I defend myself against tanks? So there you saw it right there. Work Definitely. with your team, which is what Battlefield's all about, and you will be able to over overcome those odds, even if you're just, uh, you know, just just a small infantryman. Yeah, I mean, there was a great shot there that we just uh, that we just went past that showed like uh, the mudlands in between this amazing sort of countryside, and we've got what's already been destroyed. So that was a really nice we shot. That one. Objective charge. Just you can look at so many portions of the map and just yeah. be blown away each and every time. And a uh, friendly airship has been deployed for the German Empire. Oh. So the United Kingdom coming back here, Wes. You said it was going to be a sweet man. I always believe. Uh, I didn't believe. You did not believe. <laughs> well, maybe they're being plucky. Maybe they're going to come back for the win. You know, we can't let the uh, the Germans get all three games. So maybe they've got the uh, maybe they got the knowledge. Maybe they got the power to uh, to finish the job. Oh, nice play! There picks up oh. one, but couldn't find the second pickup. That's unfortunate. As we go into free cam mode to see the lay of the land, and there is a dogfight happening over by the fields there, uh, over here. We're going to see what the current objective is for this squad. Seems like they don't have much of an objective here at this time. That's that's never good, is it? No, you, <laughs> squad it, leaders need to direct uh, yeah, you definitely. know the flow of combat. Well, that's the uh, that's part of what you were saying. I mean, the team play is really important. We saw that tank getting taken down. We're seeing the, the capturing of a flag right here. They've just taken, taken back the townhouse. You know, that's turning the tide a little bit back towards the German Empire, who now have control of more of those conquest flags. Yeah, and with the airship coming in. in in favor of the German Empire. Could they turn it around? They could certainly turn it around here, Westy. We I would be uh, very surprised if the UK squad will be able to stop this. If this airship is properly utilized, because, and just look at the shots raining yeah. down. Those are just hefty rounds there that are just causing destruction on anyone. And oh, a melee kill happens just there. One thing that we have to think about with the airship is that if you've got a lot of planes in the sky, you could all work together, take that thing down as quick as possible, and stop an assault from the enemy. Because obviously they're coming from behind. And now, if you look at it, I believe the German Empire are now charge. in the lead. And there you can see a shot of the gondolas that house those heavy machine guns. We saw just how hefty those rounds looked. Uh, certainly is something to keep in mind, is you want to focus fire on that so yep. that you can prevent anyone from, you know, causing too much of a problem here. And, uh, there is that uh, anti-tank oh, grenade. Here we go, here we go. Can he get a shot on him? That's going to be a big one. Does he get the hit? No. Ooh, the tank short. pulled away. The tank pulled... Oh, although, hang on a minute. Nice. Look at the power. That's insane, isn't it? That was That's that. absolutely incredible. I think he might have run out of anti-tank grenades, though, which is why he's running away. That's unfortunate. Vardok is going to get Ooh. that pick, and there goes the tank. <laughs> that was a, a nice take. Now oh, we got some sniping action here. Can he take him? Can he take him? You also you want to you want to take into account the 
bullet drop that happens over this. Oh, 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 goodness gracious. That was some great shots there. Or great angles with our camera. Camera shots, whatever you want to call it. That just looked cool. <laughs> that did look really cool. He's definitely got somebody on his tail, though. You can see the uh, the bullets going past. Back with the sniping. Okay. Looking for, he's trying to lead the shot a little bit, which is actually the smart thing to do. You, you might get the kill, but... Oh, he missed out on the uh, on the on the drop down there. And and the thing sniping in this game is you know it's a challenge. It it is you know it's going to take a lot of getting used to here. But here you see he he knows that this spot is currently being taken over, and I don't know if that's his teammates. I think we might no. need to. Well, He's got to try and find where the enemy player is. I mean, you can see on the mini-map, you might just be able to see that. And, ah, it's a tank. It's a tank. <laughs> he, he might have a bit of trouble taking that down with a sniper rifle. <laughs> I think he realized that, too. He was like, you know, I'm just going to go back and continue no. sniping. I'm not going to worry about the tank. You guys deal with that. I got no time for this. All right. Oh, there you go. That's the uh, the ground underneath the building there. So you can still use it as a little bit of cover. It's not fully destroyed yet, but there is a chance that, that could happen during yeah. the game. And so. especially how Doom was entering that doorway there, you know, had it not been as frantic, potentially the person that he had eliminated uh, would have been able to use the coverage and, and get a better angle on him and, and pick him off. So, uh, uh, ponies being left got hanging. Some high, or free bones. Yeah, we got the high five. We got the high five. As long as it happens, you know. Yeah, I know, because then it's that, it's that <laughs> moment that's, that's gift. And it lives forever, <laughs> and he'll never be able to live it down. So uh, we have, we averted a crisis there, folks. Back high on board with the, with the sniper. It seems like the team actually, no, yeah, yeah, the team took back the windmill. So carry on sniping to his heart's content. I don't think he's hit a living soul, which I, is unfortunate. You know, it's like uh, at first, if you don't succeed, try again. Unless you're that guy, just give it a just give it a stop. You know, just for the time being. Move closer, maybe. You know, like what what you might notice is obviously all these. All these conquest flags are relatively, they're all sort of spaced out perfectly. And, uh, oh, yes, actually, let's talk about that. Yeah, so we were uh, brought up before on this, and, and I did want to talk about a different kind of weather conditions. We saw rain, we saw sun. Now we're starting to see the fog set in, and the fog can be quite brutal. Wes, you have experiences with that too, right? Yeah, I definitely have. And I mean, obviously, we were looking at a map that was giving all different types of gameplay. So you had the close quarters, you had medium range and long range for sniping. Now, Edward. if you're a sniper at the top of that windmill over there, there's not a chance in hell that you're going to be able to see what's going on down in the town. So you're going to have to come out, potentially use your pistol, or maybe even swap to another class when you respawn to try and win the battle because, well, the weather's not going to let you snipe anymore. And keep in mind, too, you know, that this is going to affect the airship. It's going to also affect any planes that are in the air. They, they won't be able to tell where the infantry are moving. They are covered, essentially, by Mother Nature herself. Uh, so we, now... We haven't got left long left. We've only got a couple of... Oh! There goes the... coming down this time. There goes the airship. We are it's going to fall down, down, and this is not looking good. Where it's going to land is the question, and how it's going to affect the battlefield uh, is also fight. something of note here. But overall, though, you know, that stop there with the uh, from the German Empire's airship, that was huge because it could have gotten out of control. The United Kingdom may have not been able to hold these points. We've got a minute and a half left of the game, and there's only about 15 points in it. So the Germans managed to pull themselves in front, but there's still a chance that the British could bring this round in the last minute of the game, especially with the air. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> that, shark. that was brutal. <laughs> shark is brutal, man. He is not, he's not anyone's friend. Well, if you look at it now, the uh, the British are in the lead, 145 to 128. They've turned it round. Indeed they have, but they are going to be losing point A, and it seems like they might. D is being contested here. White boy can't stand a chance against Doom as he comes around the corner. Yeah, and it looks over to the yeah. townhouse. Here we go. Maybe the blue team can get this point here. This is going to be point D that was currently being contested, and they're fighting over townhouse at this moment. A lot of bodies on this we point, on this flag. They should be able to get control of it. Well, let's hope so, because if the British can do manage to pull off a win, it, it ends up 2-1. But, you know, you couldn't let go with a 3-0 landslide. You just can't let the sweep happen, man. <laughs> you know, I mean... It, it, you want to go out with some dignity. Definitely. You could win the third round, you know, that's consolation. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps the tactics weren't there in the first two rounds. Maybe we call them warm up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? That la those last two rounds didn't count. This one is the one that matters because we won. Uh, with only 14 seconds left. Uh, oh, what, what a shot. Neves <laughs> going down there. He's so happy. That was Stone Mountain to Neves, if I'm correct. Was it? I believe that was oh. Stone Mountain to Neves. That what? is awesome. Well, maybe it's like, well, we'll let you win this one. But uh, do you know what? I'm going to take you out anyway. And there we go. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Congratulations to all the competitors.